The first minute and a half of this is just my humor. Skip ahead to 1.30 if you don't want to giggle. Step one, we're gonna buff off the transfer paint here. Very important. Step two. Yeah, what do you think? Looks pretty good though, huh? Not too bad. Yeah, just one slap. That's all to it. Mm, a little slap, slap, slap. A little, a little bit slappy. Yeah. I don't know why these PDR guys make a big deal out about fixing dance. Hmm. You just Lift slap them. A little slap. A little tap. A little slap. You don't have to push down nothing really. All you gotta do is, is just buff it. All right. Lesson learned. Moving on. And for the rest of you, there's reality. So let's take a look at this dent. So yeah, I did slap out. The majority of this, uh, but as you can see, there's still plenty left because that's not how dent works. DIYers and YouTube sensations and people pouring boiling water when they could just use a heat gun, you idiots. But hell, that's the nature of the beast and that's what some people think of us. Now, why doesn't that work? Well, trapped pressure. And that's what we're gonna relieve here. So if you've been on realworldpdr.com for a while or even watch me on YouTube for a while, you're gonna know that what I'm going for here is to fix this as cleanly as possible. And to do that, what I'm gonna avoid is fighting with this dent at all. I'm not going to screw up the texture to begin with, which is gonna make my cleanup time much, much less. So what I'm doing here is using a super wide knockdown tip to try to knock down any of this crown down here. This is just trap pressure. This is just displaced metal. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get rid of that. I'm trying to move it back. I'm trying to replace the displacement, but I'm trying to do it without causing any additional texture. So what I'm looking for here is anything that looks displaced, any kind of wave that is not where it's supposed to be that I can replace, that I can feed back into this dent. Now, the reason that I'm doing that instead of just going straight for the kill with the pushes is that I want to feed as much metal back in because when this thing got impact, what happened is waves of metal kind of flowed outwards and where they stuck that created the crowns. Now that additional pressure, if I start pushing on the dent right away, what's going to happen is that pressure is going to be fighting me. So the more of this that I can get rid of the better. Now what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to beat the hell out of it as a dent tech looking at several steps ahead into the future is important. Now, Understanding and learning the dent map concept that I teach on realworldpdr.com is going to be extremely important here. Understanding the pressures that were at play. Now, this is a fairly straightforward, simple dent. We do have some body lines up top to deal with, but everything else is really soft. So what I'm looking forward to is making sure that I don't cause any additional texture with any kind of pushing, any kind of knocking down that I'm going to have to clean up later because that's going to extend my repair time significantly. So important to remember is the more of this dent that I can repair without touching it, the better. Now that is not really obvious whenever you watch it at normal speeds. So we're going to go ahead and get through this section right here. And then I'm going to do real world super speed and really illustrate exactly what in the hell I'm talking about. So now I'm using a slightly step down, but still super wide knockdown tip here. So what I'm doing is, again, just looking for any of that displaced metal, looking for any of the crowns, and all across this dent I'm looking for. I'm not getting so laser beam focused. As you can see, the very bottom of this dent still has a large crown, but what I noticed when I was working it is that it didn't really want to move easily. That's what you're going for first. Anything that wants to move easily should be what you're working with first. Otherwise, you're fighting a dent, and if you're fighting a dent, you're probably doing the dent wrong. Now, the way these tips move metal is really tremendous. It's kind of boring to watch in real time because you can't really see it working, but you'll find in PDR a lot of times the things that work the best are the things that happen so slow that it's hard to see it happening. Doesn't make sense. But again, I told you I'm going to go real world super speed on this bad boy, and I'm going to show you exactly what I was talking about. So while this might not be the most exciting bit of video that you watched, 
Once I show you real world super speed, I'm going to tell you this. These tips will be available very, very shortly. And you don't know that you want them yet, but you are going to in a second. Let's go to real world super speed. Now, let's be honest. The entire time you were watching this. You were watching the tip. Well, for two reasons. One, I kept talking about it and you were just sitting there like, oh, hurry up, Jim. I'm getting bored. Well, slap yourself like I slapped this dent. You were looking at the wrong thing. Here's where I want you to be looking. So I'm gonna speed this video up real fast and you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. So watch the edges of this dent move. Look at them go, they're gonna squeeze in. And what you're gonna see is a lot of this dent seems to repair itself just with knockdown work. So I'm gonna play this one more time after this and then I'll freeze it and explain it a little more for those of you still not picking it up. So if you're not seeing it, these are the edges of the dents and you're gonna watch them move in as I'm knocking down. For a different visual aid, it might look like this to you. The edges are gonna squeeze in, you're gonna see this dent get significantly smaller. So let's watch it three more times and then we will be moving on. Here's the first one. See those edges start to move in and the dent shallow up quite a bit. All you're left are the deeper areas that are still holding pressure. Here's number two. In, in, shallowed up. And number three. And there it goes. Dang, it's like I almost know what I'm talking about here. Okay, this next part is significantly less important than the first, but I am using a dent dial with a large leather wrap tip. Now, I never tighten down the dent dial tip whenever I do this because that large leather wrap tip uh, actually moves in one direction. It's kind of shaped so that you can fit it in the damage, uh, moving one direction or another. Uh, that way you're not working across the damage. So that creasy spot here, I'm able to get the dent dial right in there where it needs to go. So I'm going to go ahead and tack this body line, which is going to loosen up those crowns because crowns and lows work in contrast with each other most of the time in PDR. So if I were to loosen up or uh, pick up a low, it's going to loosen up the crown. If I knock down a crown, as you guys saw in real world super speed, it's going to shallow the low. But the thing that causes the most texture the most frequently in PDR are pushes. So that's why I attack those crowns first to try to shallow everything up because I don't wanna be working against more pressure while I'm pushing. Now that's not always the plan of attack. There is no set in stone plan of attack here. Visually, generally now after what, 16 years, I can tell what crowns are gonna be willing to work with me and when I should start pushing. If a crown is far too tight, well, then you need to push to soften that thing up a bit. If you start trying to hammer on a crown that's too tight, you're gonna be causing texture with that. So again, the best way to speed up your repairs is to limit the amount of finishing work that you have to do. Finishing work is tough, it's time consuming. So how about this concept? To keep a dent clean, never screw up the cleanliness to begin with. Or at the very least, think three, four, five, six, ten 10 steps ahead and make sure that you're taking care of future you. Don't be just jabbing with hard tools in places that a soft tip will do the trick. And don't ignore what your dent map is telling you. Where are the pressures trapped? Take care of those. What the dent's willing to give you is what you want to attack right now. So a little bit of pushing and right back to knocking down. Let me tell you this, my friends, my enemies, whoever's watching this. Knocking down is more important than pushing in PDR. Let me repeat that. Knocking down is more important than pushing in PDR. If you're doing PDR correctly, you're probably knocking down about 70% of the time. As I have demonstrated, knocking down makes a bigger difference than pushing. Now, this isn't always the case. There's always exceptions to the rules here. One main important one being something like hail damage, where the least you can use your knockdown, the better. But that's really a different kind of dent. You don't get a whole lot of displacement with your normal type of hail. Now, if it does hit a side panel, hits a body line, something like that, you'll discover that displacement is real. And if you learn how to take care of it, you will actually be a better hail technician. Hey, hail technicians are a-holes, so you probably won't take my word for it if you're watching this, but whatever. I was a traveling hail technician for years, so I have the right to say that. Those are my people. Really, nothing has changed. This is the same as five minutes ago. All I'm doing is knocking down waves that I'm finding. I'm using these tips, which, God, I love these tips. I can't say enough about these tips. I love these tips because they knock down so cleanly. I use uh, the slapper tapper, for instance, and I love the slapper tapper, but there's a real learning curve to that. These you can pick up and just grab them and go. And if you're wondering where to buy some tips like this, hey, hang on. I will tell you shortly here on YouTube, on Real World PDR, wherever you're watching this, you will have access to buying tips like this. 
But there again, the only purpose for these are to make sure that everything stays clean throughout the entire repair. Okie dokie, next thing we're gonna take a look at is Stainliner tool, Stainliner technique. We're going to be using some of this dragging technique, also some of that rolling technique to reestablish this body line here. So the idea being that we don't want to put any texture on this. Slapping the majority of that out, well, you know, that kept texture from happening. So why start putting texture in it now? I can't think of a reason. So the tool that we're going to use from Stainliner here is this killer whale tail. It's a small one. Now we have this creasy area left. Now this is where this killer whale tail just kills it. Now the fact of the matter is this killer whale tail kills it everywhere. Once you understand the techniques, speaking of the techniques, if you go to the Stainliner training, if you're planning on going to MTE, show up the 29th because the 29th Stainliner is having their, their exhibition. Kaz, the man himself, is going to be there showing off how to use these Stainliner tools correctly. I can show you what I know, but this man actually invented these techniques, invented these tools, he still makes them. All of the Stainliner staff is going to be there. This is legitimately, and I'm telling you, and I cannot stress this enough, this is legitimately a once in a lifetime chance for everyone. If I have made you take an interest in Stanliner, if anything has made you take an interest in Stanliner tools, you need to get your ass to the Stanliner demonstration, the Stanliner expedition, the Stanliner seminar on the 29th, right before MTE. Back to the repair, you can see me using this rolling technique to grab this crease with this killer whale tail. Now, Stanliner tools, what makes them awesome is a lack of texture. If you lose, use the correct techniques with Stanliner tools you don't create texture. Any texture you do create is very minimal and very easy to repair. So I'm rolling that tool along that crease. Here I'm using the dragging technique. So anytime that I get, you know, a big wide low, I can just drag this tool through that dent. Now what that does, now imagine if you're pushing up poke by poke by poke by poke, you've got a good tendency, and you've got a good probability of causing push marks. Now if you're dragging this tool, you have even pressure throughout the entire drag, you're not gonna cause push marks. Now imagine you have a hole in the sand, right? So the tool is gonna to be a rake that you're using. You're gonna reach across the hole that's in that sand and you're gonna pull that sand from the other side of the hole and try to fill up that hole. So that is what you're doing when you're using this raking, this pulling technique, this dragging technique, I believe they call it in Stanliner. And if you want to repair large shallow areas cleanly and quickly, which you should want to do, this is a great technique for it. Okay, so same tool, same techniques. I just switched the camera angle a little bit. You're gonna see me skip around because my big fat head gets in the way here and there. Reason being, I am bald and I have to wear a hat or everybody makes fun of me. I don't care, doesn't even hurt my feelings a bit. <coughs> Jerks. So I'm using that rolling technique and that dragging technique right up here where that body line is. That is one of the beautiful things about Stanliner tools too, and I am not a Stanliner salesman. Man, let me say that. I'm not associated with Stanliner. I've never gone to Lithuania to train. I just love the tools. I make zero dollars and zero cents off talking about them. Right there was my skip ahead because of the fat head, and there's my fat head one more time, just for a short period. So using that dragging technique, you can really see how I've shallowed up that area without having to put any texture, any push marks in there whatsoever. Now to reestablish that body line, that rolling technique works well. I'm actually gonna go to a slow bend pirate hook to finish up, well not even finish up, but to get the majority of this body line out. So now I've switched to the bottom of that fender close to the bumper and I'm using that same dragging technique. Don't worry about that, that's just my elimidant light giving me a wink because it's about out of battery. So you can see, my entire focus, and this is universal when I'm doing all dents, my entire focus is thinking about how do I eliminate cleanup work because cleanup work takes the longest and I do that by making sure that I stay clean throughout the entirety of the repair if I have to learn new techniques to do it well that's what I'm going to do so moving on to these little body line shots right up here at the top the paint is chipped out and that sucks because it kills your visibility but what I'm doing here is using another one of those tips that comes in the set again hint 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 they will be for sale before too long these things are pretty amazing because you can knock down very very cleanly so, if you don't understand what I'm doing here, I recommend you log on to realworldpdr.com. If you're already here, go check out Pinchy Little Body Lines. That explains exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing here and why it works. 
pinchy little body lines, I'm going to say, is one of the crown jewels of realworldpdr.com. If you're paying attention, it really explains PDR just about as well as anybody can. So working on this for a second, and then I'm gonna switch over to another stand liner tool. Now, the next stand liner tool I'm gonna use is the Slow Bend Pirate Hook. Here's a picture of it right here. Now, I get a lot of questions. Killer Whale Tail versus Pirate Hook. A lot of people ask me that. Well, if it's available, grab the Killer Whale Tail simply because they're harder to get a hold of because they're very hard to manufacture. Again, Kaz, he manufactures these by hand. So watch what I'm doing here. Now, the one thing the pirate hook gets me here is I'm able to get all the way up into that body line and using that rolling technique, I'm able to pick up this area. So regardless of the fact that the paint's not there, I can roll through that area being assured that I'm picking it up. Now, if I pay attention to my rolls on the edges of this tool, you're gonna get the most power, the most leverage. So if I can line up my roll and make sure that the edge is hitting there where that paint's chipped off, I'll have confidence that I'm putting enough power into that low area right there. Now, this is also a very, very multifunctional tool. Well, all standliner tools are multifunctional. Now, this one apparently, now I'm not an expert at standliner tools, this one apparently has even more uses than I'm even comfortable with. So that's why I cannot wait to head to the standliner seminar directly before MTE because I'm gonna learn from Kaz himself how to do all of these techniques and I'm sure I'm gonna learn some brand new ones that I have never even thought of. Real World has a ton of standliner techniques and I promise you that I'm gonna be bringing you even more after this seminar. You should get there too. Now, as I often do, I'm going to finish the last bits of this repair or you know, at least the you know, 90 to 95% of this repair using the blending technique. Now, this isn't a blending tutorial, which is a whole different thing, but we've got several of them at realworldpdr.com. So check those out. But when possible, this is how I like to finish up dents. Now, the reason being is that I'm very good with a hammer. If you can get good with a hammer too, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and a lot of push marks, which are texture. We don't want texture. Now, while you're still learning with a hammer, you're going to create some texture. That's just the nature of the beast. At this point, you could absolutely still use those tips that I was showing you, but it's going to take a while longer. Now, even though this isn't a blending tutorial, I do want to show you this. This is my setup while I'm blending. Notice how I've pushed the light back and further in. This is gonna force me to be able to view the light. I'm gonna have to move my face very close to the panel. This is a long view and I teach you all about this at realpdr.com. That's actually in PDR 101. This is one of the basic, but this is the long view. It's gonna make sure that I get every single little wave is gonna become apparent to me. This is not only extremely important while blending, but it's also extremely important while finishing dents. So when I'm pushing, a lot of times I will finish using this. I will finish with this extreme long view, whether it's blending or pushing, whatever. And then I'm gonna move that light out and I'm gonna find some natural reflection, find a hard line anywhere, way off in the distance. Um, for instance, there's a stand right there, a red stand right behind my light there. I might use that as a hard line. That's gonna give me all the details. I get emails constantly about how to best finish dents. Now, again, on realworldpdr.com, we cover this a lot. The secret to finishing is how much time are you willing to put in it? Are you willing to chase every little wave? Are you willing to chase every little micro low? And you should be because that's what separates an okay PDR tech from a great PDR tech. Now, finishing takes forever. Another thing that separates good versus great PDR techs is how you start a dent because how you start a dent one more time is indicative of how you're gonna finish a dent. By avoiding texture all throughout this repair, I have cut down my cleanup time, my finishing time, which takes the longest significantly. See how this all ties together? Start clean and clean. Never be dirty, unless it's dirty jokes, because we all like those. But I promise not to curse as much in real world PDR, so you don't get to hear any of my dirty jokes because they're only good with swear words. Well, I reckon that's how you do that. So this is a wholesale unit. No expectation of perfection, so the scratch don't really mean much. The uh, touch-up guy's coming through there after we do. So we finished up with our hammer. You probably saw some new tips, and I mean, all in all, I think not too bad. That, my friends, is how you do that. So didn't turn out too bad. A couple little waves here and there. I'm not too concerned about it. Wholesale car, they're going to be thrilled. Body Shop is trying to charge them 1000 I charge significantly less than that. 
about 40 minutes worth of work went into this so all in all fairly easy repair you can find this in the intermediate section at realworldpdr.com but after a few weeks on real world pdr you're going to discover that this is easy as pie once you understand some of my base concepts dent map in particular is going to help a bunch hey if you haven't yet sign up for the real world pdr workshop that's a two-day event at my shop one more way realworldpdr.com is revolutionizing the way that people learn pdr Find out why people are saying this is a better way to learn PDR. Also, take advantage of the fact that you can have first dibs on Revolution PDR Tools products. Combine that with all of the discount codes available at realworldpdr.com and you have got a value you cannot miss. Also, don't forget about the standalone event the day before MTE. And if you do make it to MTV, look for me. I'll be hanging around the Dentmate, Blim, and Standliner booths a lot. Make sure you stop by, shake my hand. I can't wait to meet some of my subscribers and some of my members.